Welcome back to the Entertainment Rundown on the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. That's right, Michael is back after only four days. He was here on Monday with Giles Croft, and now he's back to talk about the biggest entertainment news stories over the last month and a bit. Michael, how are you? What was that intro? That was unhinged. <laughs> that was so unhinged. What do you mean it was so unhinged? I, it was wild. I'm, it's, 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 it's wild. That's all I can say. Wild. Oh, I'm Incredible. sorry. I'm sorry. You do it better next time. Okay. In the no, November. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, last time you bet me to do that, I was pretty incredible. So no comment, no comment, no comment at all. But how are you? How's life? How's Liberty? How's the pursuit of happiness? I am grand. I've been booked, busy, and blessed, um, which is all one can ask for. I left one show that I was doing uh, as on stage to then immediately go into another show where I'm behind the scenes putting it up. I will not get to sleep probably until Monday, Sunday night into Monday. We'll see. We'll see. So by the time this airs, you will have slept, is what you're saying. Uh, We'll maybe. (laughs) We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. That's true. That's true. Um, So first off, great show for Giles Croft, uh, Broadway director of uh, The Kite Runner. Uh, Interesting. Hopefully by the time this airs, we will have lots of good feedback from that episode. Um, But you're back to talk about the entertainment world, the entertainment world, entertainment world, entertainment world. And I, I hate starting off on a sad note, but I think you and I both will agree that the news out of Hollywood earlier late in October with the untimely passing of Leslie Jordan, the uh, famed icon of Beverly Leslie of Will and Grace passed away from a car accident. Uh, I'm not sure if I broke the news to you, but it seemed like I did. And I kind of, you did. Oh, there you go. Um, This, this sent shockwaves kind of through the gay world and the gay entertainment world. Uh, How'd you feel after this whole news broke that mr jordan had passed away i don't get sad over celebrities like i don't we we know that we know that i I know (laughs) i I feel like i need to always preface it because like i don't know like it's it's weird i i really truly loved his work um not just from will and grace but sorted lives um he also was on american horror story a few times he just was a genuine delight And I know for myself and many others uh, really turned to him at the beginning of the pandemic because he was just, he was entertaining us and he was pushing forth this brightness that we needed. And like the fact that it also was a car accident, it's just, it's so tragic. Um, I I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. And then also Angela Lansbury dying this month too. It, it, It just... It just was not a great month for gay folks. No. 2022 hasn't been a great year for gay folks, starting off with Betty White. So it's just, mm. but um, Leslie Jordan, uh, he still, he was on the show, Call Me Cat, uh, with me, on, me, 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 I am Bialik. My am Bialik. And Cheyenne Jackson, they were uh, in, the, all three of them were in the show. Uh, they shut down production so far and nothing has come out to say if production is starting back up, if they're going to have to try and write in uh, Mr. Jordan's passing, how they're going to sort, of, sort of address that. Uh, all I know is it is a big loss for the entertainment world. And, and I agree that a lot of people did turn to him during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, when he was on Instagram. I'm not sure if it was TikTok, but I don't do TikTok. It was TikTok Instagram. It was okay, it was Instagram. I like the TikToks. You like the TikToks? I, I I have never opened TikTok. I've never downloaded TikTok. I will refuse. My husband sends me TikToks on a regular basis. I refuse to open TikTok because it is a tick in the talk. The, what? <laughs> I don't even know. My husband refuses to download it, but he will literally watch them on my phone. And I'm like, just get your own fucking TikTok. And he's like, no, I can just watch them on yours. I'm like, nope. I agree uh, with your husband. Uh, TikTok is bad. TikTok is the the end of the world, but we're going to be talking about social media later on. So let's just be honest with that. Um, 
we are seeing sort of this rules of three. A lot of people are dying right now. And I, I know I'm not trying to make a joke about this, but um, is this just the name of the game? Is it just because we knew Leslie Jordan that we're kind of not emotional about it, but more taken back by it? Because there have been other deaths in the entertainment world in the last few weeks since our last chat. And they didn't hit me as hard as Angela Lansbury or even Leslie Jordan. I, I mean, I think he's pretty well known, especially with the pandemic. He kind of did go a viral, as the kids say. Um, but I just, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. I think I've reached the age where all the celebrities that I, I know and love are getting up there in age and starting to pass away. And so I think it's just, every year it's the same thing and it's now getting to the point where more and more of the passing away is people I actually know versus people I don't know yeah but that just comes as you get older <sighs> and the world gets older with you getting older sucks I can tell you that much for sure um I want to turn to sort of still on the same line of social media and that is it's official Twitter is officially owned by Elon Musk and <laughs> celebrities in, uh, are announcing their departure from the social media platform because uh, Elon Musk's free speech. Uh, we had Taya Leone announced that she's no longer going to be doing it. We had Austin Matthews, the gentleman, I think his name is off, Matthew something, the Bill and Ted excellent adventure, not the Keanu Reeves guy, the other one, that shows you how much we know who he is. He's announced that he's leaving uh, Twitter. Shonda Rhimes has announced that she's leaving Twitter. Um, we're, Rob Reiner has announced that he's going to be leaving. Is Twitter a passing fad now? I know you are not on Twitter, but is Twitter a passing fad? Is is TikTok where it is now? Are celebrities more ingrained in actually talking to people one on one instead of dealing with through, dealing with it through social media? It's all performative. Please explain so that way. Well, like, <laughs> it's just all performing. Like, I hate when it's like, oh, this evil, no good celebrity with lots of money bought TikTok and I'm going to leave because he's not actually trying to change the world. But like, Beyonce, why don't you take your $40 billion and try and change the world since Elon Musk isn't? Or Shonda Rhimes, take some of your money and do like, it's so performative. Like Elon Musk is a garbage human being. We all know that. This whole thing is a, a shitty power move. I've been seeing reports that we're seeing the N word utilized about 500% more on TikTok, not TikTok, on Twitter uh, than we have in the past. Like it's just, it, it, it's just to perf anytime someone's like, I'm just going to leave something. It's like announcing you're leaving when you, ba when barely people were kind of focusing on you. Like the, it's Shonda Rhimes is the only name that you've said that I felt like, oh, that's kind of a big name. Well, not even that, but isn't it the, in the similar veins of politics? Like Susan Sarandon, when Donald Trump won, said, oh, I'm going to be moving to uh, Canada if something happens, or I'm going to be moving here. Exactly. So I, I, I agree with you. I agree that saying you're going to do something and then announcing it on Twitter is two different things, right? If you were going to leave, just fucking leave, pardon my French, but just turn off the switch and go, okay, I'm done. Move on. You don't need to make news for yourself by saying that you're leaving Twitter, by saying on Twitter that you're leaving Twitter. Because I, I, I said I was not going to be using my personal accounts on Facebook and Twitter anymore. I'd be using it just for so my, uh, my, my actual the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown uh, Twitter handle and the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown Facebook and Instagram. And I, I've tried to keep to that. I, I, I said I was going to leave it. Yes, it's performative because I'm still using it, but I'm not using it for personal issues anymore. And yes, I did post when uh, the cancer walk was going on in Calgary to raise some funds. But overall, just leave. If you want to leave, just leave. There's no point of saying you're going to leave on the platform you're saying you're going. Oh, and the Deanna Troy from Star Trek The Next Generation said she's leaving as well. <laughs> I just uh, like... Well, the whole social media thing has just gotten out of hand. Like, who fucking cares? And like 90% of these people use their Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, to self-promote their shit. 
So like, just fucking do it. Like, if you don't want to do it for personal, fine. Say, I'm just going to use this for professional. I'm just going to use this for professional announcements. That's it. Like, honestly, I've scaled back 90% of my social media usage because I don't fucking care anymore. Like, it's too much effort to maintain, which is why I don't have a Twitter because what the fuck's the point? Like, nobody cares about every little minute thought that goes through my head. I'm, and nor should they. I don't know why people are so obsessed with celebrity, but that's in celebrity culture and it's an ingrained thing. And we can get into a, into a black hole of conversation about that if we really needed to. But like, the only reason I'm posting even on Facebook now is to promote my own shit or to ask my, my network of humans that I'm connected to. Actual uh, people you know. People yeah, you people actually I have know. connection with instead of some random person who's just randomly following you just for the sake of you said something witty that one time. Yes, no, I, I only use my Facebook now to like ask for props or costumes or things I need for shows that I'm doing or, or, or book recommendations. Like I only do it when I'm like, hey, I need like a specific support from my network of people that I trust. So I only, I use Facebook still, but it's really just for that. Don't use Twitter, Instagram. If I'm on there, I'm on there. I mean, every once in a while, I'll post a photo. I'll be like, oh, I'm really feeling it. I or let me throw this up here. But like, it's all getting so convoluted, and it's all shifting towards video. Like Instagram now, if you're not posting fucking videos, nobody fucking sees your content, and it's not spread anyway. So I don't have time to sit there and craft videos and TikToks and this, that, and the third. Like. I'm a grown ass man. I literally just need to get things from people to put on performances and that's it. I use and social I, media to connect with my potential guests because even Monday's, Monday's guest, Giles Croft, the director of The Kite Runner, we wouldn't have been able to connect with him if we didn't like post that Lights of Broadway review that you did of yeah. The Kite Runner. And then he followed the show and we reached out and we connected. And I, I, I agree that social media is a double-edged sword because it is a cesspool. It is a cesspool of epic proportions. And I say at the show all the time, get off social media and go have a fucking conversation. And it's true. Have a conversation conversation but on the flip side i have connected with a lot of people who have come on this show through social media and i wouldn't have been able to do that beforehand so i agree the performative part the celebritism of social media is there but for fuck's sakes like i i I love twitter because i'm able to connect with people but i despise twitter because i have to interact with people that is the only reason i would get a twitter basically at this point is to like do the like read my reviews listen to the things i'm on go see the shows i'm in like it's all for the self-promotion but like god then it's another thing i need to keep track of and maintain and if you you can't just post what you have you have to post your self-promotion you have to post other things because people don't just want to read it's just it's a it's all a game it's all a fucking game and i'm i'm done i don't want to play monopoly like this anymore (laughs) So here are the list of, as of October 31st of recording this, these are the the celebrities who have left Twitter in the performative way. Shonda Rhimes, Sarah Bareilles, Tony Braxton, Brian Koppelman, Mm? who? Uh, Creator of Showtime's Billions and Super Pump, The Battle for Uber, Taya Leone, Ken Olin, uh, producer of This Is Us, uh, Alex Winter, the other part of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and that is it as of right now, according to NBC News on October 31st at 2.27 Mountain Standard Time, 4.30. Happy Halloween. Eastern Standard. Happy Halloween. So, uh, social media, downfall of society. God bless it. We're in the world of social media and the social media fame. Uh, speaking of social media fame and free speech, because this is just the episode that we just, the, the transitions from story to story is just there. Yay West, Kanye West. I think I'm going to officially announce this because you know we really want them on this show. We are banning Yay West from ever appearing on the cross border interviews with Chris Brown's entertainment rundown. He will never be a guest on this show. I know I joke, but still, Kanye West or Yay West is in shit after shit after shit trouble. Anti Semitic, uh, sort of racist. He has come out saying that he can't be racist because he's black and Jewish. 
he has been dropped over and over again for some of the things that he has been saying. He is no longer a part of the official billionaire club, according to some media reports. Um, is it time that, how do I say this correctly? Is it time for people to start not taking celebrities so seriously and stop just to, just start ignoring them and just watch what they do instead of listening to what they say? I'm pretty sure you'd announced like a year, a year ago that Kanye was never welcome on your show. I'm going to be real. I don't think that this is breaking news. <laughs> well, I'm repeating it because he's changed his name to Ye West. So Ye West oh, is no longer okay. allowed on the show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I say, I'm up with it, okay? I'm down with it, as the kids would say. I'm all that mm, in a bag of potato chip. Mm. No, the kids aren't <laughs> saying that. The kids are not saying that. Um, so are we in a world where celebritism is fading and what people are no. actually really? You no. Know. Do people still follow Kanye West or Ye West? Yeah. Or, really? Yeah. People are still going to support him, just like no matter what any no matter what Caitlyn Jenner does, people are still gonna fall and support her. He is saying things that a portion of the population wants to hear and wants to come out of, a, of the mouth of someone like him so they can tokenize him. And he is 100% comfortable being tokenized. The only, like, I think someone at a recently, maybe it was, we were talking about this, or I may have said this uh, uh, in a different conversation of- um, Are you talking to Kanye someone West else about canceled? entertainment news without behind my back, Michael Nichols Pate? How dare yeah. you do that? How dare you? I am- You watch wow. the show, so I- <laughs> Um, like, it, it's just until America stops listening, it, he's going to keep saying. And honestly, like, why didn't all these companies pull out when Kanye said that slavery was a choice? Like, there are, like, he has been saying shit like this for a long ass time. He needs mental health support right now because, and I'm not saying like, oh my God, it'll reform him if he goes to a therapist. No, he needs to get mental health support because he's spiraling and he has a lot of atoning to do and a lot of work he needs to do. But like, why didn't all these companies he was working with cancel him years ago, months ago, years ago? Like the, the slavery was a choice that was over a year ago. I feel he said that. It like, feels like a year ago, probably was like last week, knowing that the way that this year's gone. But like, it's, it's so common that, it, that Kanye will say something for shock value for uh, 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 a media clip, for a media blip, for a soundbite, for a, a trendy TikTok thing that like, we're not seeing it because I'm not surrounded by people who are supporting that. But I mean, I was seeing on social media and seeing elsewhere people trying to uh justify what he was saying and being well you know it's not that bad because you know he he was put down but it's like no no no. what he said was anti-semitic stop supporting him it's the same reason people still go to chick-fil-a they know chick-fil-a is donating their money to organizations that are doing conversion camps on youth to try and stop them being gay but they still go america doesn't care they want to support who they want to support and they're going to do it and they're going to justify every single problematic thing that that person or organization does. So no matter what, Kanye fans are ride or die at this point if they're still with him and they will justify everything he says because, quote, they can separate music from the art. But they'll still try and justify uh, the, the person making the art rather than just say, well, like the music. Well, no, you're, you're, money to get, you're still giving money to him. So you are you have to justify that. Oh, oh you, you're finding a way. But when do we separate that? When do we separate what the, what is said in the celebrity? Because we are seeing actors, or I should say TV show hosts and mid, night, late night show hosts like James Corden being called out finally for their uh, 
attitude when it comes to being on planes, being in restaurants. Uh, there's a report out of New York that he went to a New York restaurant. He sat down. He had he gave he, the, the waitress and the manager had a bad experience with dealing with him because he was very rude to them. And the 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 manager of the store said or the restaurant said, no, nope, we don't want you here anymore. You don't want to ever come back until you apologize. And James Corden has apologized apparently on TV I and then guess. took it back and exactly. apologized again. So, and you and I have talked about James Corden on the show numerous times, and it's not a secret in Hollywood where he is not a nice person. Even in England, where he's originally from, there's reports out that like even Patrick Stewart doesn't like James Corden. There are people who just are angry at James Corden, but he seems to have that attitude around him where people still love him. People want to go work with him. People want to go on his show. It, 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 how do we who? change? Who wants who? to? Who? I, I, I mean, I feel like when you're a late night host, you have to go and you have to do the rounds for whatever. But you don't you're have promoting. to say I'm not. You can say I don't want to go on his show. Like you can tell your PR people, I will do every show. Put me in front of it, whoever you want, but I'm not going on James Corden's show. That's not the contract you sign. Really? Yeah, the contract. If the contract says you have to do a PR press tour, and they say James Corden's is part of that you kind of have to do it or else you get blacklisted. And like, wouldn't you want to get blacklisted for like, even just, no, but it's not blacklisted on James Corden. It, it, James Corden, it, what he's doing is not even comparable to Kanye. I mean, he's an no, awful I'm just, shitty uh, human being. I'm just, I'm just transitioning as always. I'm just, I know, I know you're transitioning, but <laughs> I don't like the transition. Um, I just like celebrities are problematic. Like, they're going to say and do stuff like shitty things. And if someone wants to support, I'm very much of the belief that like, you can't separate the art from the artist. And that there's, if you want to continue to support the art, then you have to acknowledge and say like, yep, I am okay with what the person's doing. So like Kanye's, Kanye, I won't support, I don't blah, 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 blah. Like that's not my shtick. I don't support him. I don't buy his merchandise. I don't go to his shows. I don't listen to his music. None of that. James Corden, I don't really listen to engage with his media either. The unfortunate thing is because I'm in the musical world, he pops up in a lot of movie musicals, which is a, much to my anger and annoyance and frustration <laughs> that he's there but he pops up a lot and I want to support the other artists in that. So I sometimes have to then look at, okay, is what James Corden's doing comparable to what Kanye's doing? No, he's a shitty person. He's rude. He's disrespectful. I can watch a movie and I can pinpoint specifically, like I feel more comfortable consuming that media that he's a part of versus Kanye. If Kanye was in the movie, I can't support any sort of way, which it's it's because it, it reaches that point when if you're going to look at something you have to kind of it's a weird brain thing because people do it with michael jackson they'll still listen to him support him go and partake despite all of the stuff that he has as well where's the line for you then because i i i know for me there are lines that i've drawn in the sand to say okay this person has done x y and z i won't i won't listen to them i won't uh, watch any of their movies and then there's other people i'm like okay x y and z okay i feel like he's in my favorite show is he part of the main cast yes but do i want to continue watching the show yes but how do i get around that so where's that line in the sand for you where is the line in the sand that you won't cross if that if x person or if celebrity x does this that or the other you just won't cross it when it comes to social issues because I, I can't like, or, or, or harmful acts, like abusive acts, sexual abuse, physical abuse, domestic violence, I can't support. And I can't support media that, that, that someone's included in that engages in acts like that. And there is also, cause there's uh, Harvey Weinstein is a prime example of he, he produced thousands and thousands of movies. Like he, his name is on a lot of very popular movies and a lot of things that I do like, I won't buy it new. If I'm going to buy it, I'll go buy it from a thrift store secondhand because then it's not necessarily him getting more money or his family getting more money. Or I will borrow it from the internet if I really need to watch it. But a lot of times I'm, I don't, 
I, I really have, am finding now as I'm getting older, like I, I, I don't have time for it. Like James Corden, sure, he's being shitty to waiters and waitresses. It's awful. It's not comparable to what Harvey Weinstein did or what Michael Jackson did or Kevin Spacey. And so I, I've gotten to the point where I just, I, I won't watch things Kevin Spacey's in. I, I, I won't watch things uh, Roman Polanski's done. Like I won't engage with that media. Because I've, I've been having tr- uh, difficulties over the last few weeks and yet again, transition after transition here, sure. because Bill Murray over the last month has been getting into the news more and more. Uh, there was reports from Seth Green that he held him over top of a uh, garbage bin, yeah. dumped him in. There was reports from Gina Davis saying that uh, she, I'm not sure if it was last month or in a book that she wrote uh, and then she mentioned him, but there have been reports after reports after reports of Bill Murray coming out saying that he's a, not so nice guy to work with. And there are some allegations against them. Even David Letterman, like Maya Rudolph just came out today, uh, October 31st saying she felt horrible after going on his show because she had looked up to him. And then she, like he, he mispronounced her name. He made jokes about her and she just felt shitty. So in that essence, I I'm sitting here going, okay, Ghostbusters. I love it as a movie. I, I, I love Caddyshack. Do I not watch it? Because I think what he's done is horrible, which it is, but at the same time, it, it, it's very confusing for me. And I know we're in a weird transition in society right now where there's a lot of things going on and every day everything's uh, evolving, but I just, I'm trying to figure out where the grace period is or where the, where the sweet spot is, because there are some shows that I will watch over and over again. And I go, Oh, that person's in it. Fuck. I can't watch that anymore because he's done X, Y, and Z. Like I love, I love the very first X-Men movie like the original 1999 with Hugh Jackman uh Halle Berry uh all that I love it but Brian Singer directed that and he's been accused he he's been accused of uh uh molestation of young boys and I'm going like how do I how do I separate the two now the big thing and a really good way to kind of I find to move about it is if you already own it yeah I mean, it doesn't do anyone any good to just, because uh, then it moves from, from I'm actively choosing to not engage with media to performative of, I'm going to break the CD. I'm going to do, throw this in the garbage. Or I, leave Twitter. Um, it, 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 to me, that sort of then becomes, okay, I already own the media. I already own it. I, it's physically in my hand. He's not getting any money from me watching it. He's not getting anything from me at all because he already got it. I, I can engage with that media. I can watch it. I can be a part of it, what, what have you. Um, it's if I'm actively seeking to go buy more media brand new, that Brian Singer media brand new or Kevin Spacey movie brand new or the latest Louis C.K., comedy special or i'm going to go stream it on netflix where part of my active engagement is financially funding said individual okay i also find that people pick and choose with celebrities to do it with because people are going to not support kevin spacey but then are still going to support johnny depp who has a history of being abusive on sets just in the same way Bill Murray is, except phys- a little more physical, actually, than what Bill Murray's been doing. But they're going to still support him because they want to support him. And it's, it's definitely a, a gray, murky area that it, it's hard because media is so intermingled. And unfortunately, a lot of the predators and shitty people got famous. <laughs> and it's because they played the game, right? And so it kind of reaches that point of, okay, we now know this person's shitty. I already own all this media rather than be performative. I acknowledge it's my favorite. I acknowledge it's problematic. I'm still going to watch it, but I'm not going to like stream it on Netflix. I'm not going to stream it on Amazon. I'm not going to go buy the 30th anniversary, whatever of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Like I'm not going to purposefully spend money or if I really want this movie, but I don't want to give him, let me go see if it's in a thrift store. I like the movie. I don't want to give Brian Singer my money. Let me go to a thrift store, a secondhand store, a 
used bookshop, something like that, because then the money is going to that store versus the specific creator. Speaking about giving creators money, earlier this month, the long-awaited drop, drop of Taylor Swift's the new album came out. <laughs> You're just loving Little Miss Capitalist. <laughs> Little, Little Miss Capitalist. Capitalist. Uh, she dropped on, a, I don't know what day it was, October blow so and so, uh, dropped her Midnight album. It came out exactly at midnight. And then I didn't know this, and Michael kind of alluded to this, and he's going to explain a little bit better than I will. Three hours later, she released another album at the exact same time with new uh, uh, songs that were not included on her original drop. Um First off, I've never listened to this album. I refuse to listen to this album. I I think I stopped listening to Taylor Swift after Shake It Off, and I went, okay, you have one good hit, and that's about it. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the new album? I listened to just the one meme song. I just think, like, it's so... Like, this is... This, I, I don't... I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I am not. But the fact that she released an album and then released another album with seven additional songs and called it the 3 a.m. version, that you could only hear the seven additional songs by buying the second album, which you already had purchased. It's like, girl, it is not financially responsible to support Taylor Swift. It it's is not, not financially responsible to uh, support any of these artists because they're getting millions and millions of dollars from the industry. And then... Oh yeah, no problem. Like this is like a cash grab, and then she's releasing a vinyl version. But the vinyl version is not including the seven songs from the three AM version. So I, she, so everyone's like, oh, she's gonna release a three AM vinyl. So do we buy this vinyl? But what if we don't buy it and it sells out? And then she doesn't release the three AM on. But it's like y'all are gonna end up buying two fucking records of the same album to get the seven additional songs. Like it's, it's cap. It, like. She wants to sit there and be like, look at how supportive I am and blah, blah, blah. And I'm fighting for you and I love you. And you're like, she is the capitalist of most capital people. Just like your girl, Beyonce, capitalist. Like she can rap and sing about how she's- She ain't no, she ain't my girl. She is not my girl. She can, she can, she can sing and write music or write a lyric on a song about how she is all for the, the crowds and people and- socialism and fully engage in like aggressive capitalist acts i'm just on a roll today you caught me on like a oh i'm ready to fight <laughs> i just i just find uh it disrespectful to the fans like i i i, I don't know how i like like I, I don't have any musician that I would go out and buy their album the day it drops, right? Like, I, I like maybe ten years ago I might have, but looking at the today's crop of musicians, I can't say I would be able to look at one and go, I really need to buy their newest album because usually the album I buy is their worst album. I've gone out and I've bought albums before, and I've gone, what the hell is this? I thought they were good, and then you go, what the fuck? So that's why I'm like. I'll listen to it on YouTube when YouTube streams all her music videos. Well, also that, like it's on YouTube. Things are on Spotify. Things are on uh, Tidal. They're on Amazon Music. They're on U uh, in iTunes Music. Like you can stream music. Who's buying albums these days? Exactly. And the fact that people like are, oh, well, you have to buy the album. Like we all know in 30 days, she's going to release fall on Facebook. So you just paid money to her for this. And then you're going to go pay for her ticket for her concert. I'm, I can't. She made me mad. Um, speaking of long way to returns, uh, on Friday, the newest music from Rihanna, your girl Rihanna, has Love dropped her. because she is in the soundtrack for the upcoming movie Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. Now, I have not listened to this new out song. Uh, I just I just haven't had the time to because it was a busy, busy week. But hopefully by the time this airs, I will listen to it once. I've heard reviews of it. It's good. I heard some reviews that are really bad about it um are you surprised that she's back but not back with a full album um i've not heard it yet i'm excited waiting you broke that news to me because i've just been in a, a, a black hole of theater and and my brain is not functioning like a person um 
but uh, am I surprised she put an album out or not an album, put out a song for her? No, I'm not surprised. Am I surprised she did not release an album? No, she's never going to write more music like that for us, I think. And it makes, breaks my heart. I want a new Rihanna album. I want a Rihanna tour. I just need to see Rihanna and she don't need it. She does not need the money. So why would she go on tour and leave her baby and her family? And she's just living her dream. She's an icon. She is the moment. She is a legend. I love her. So let's talk about, because we've talked about celebrity news, let's talk about movie news. Over the last few months, over the last month, we've uh, both seen some new movies that have come out, some movies that I would not recommend to anyone. Um, I want to start with the ending, but the not ending of Halloween, because there's always... It ended. Girl, everyone thought it ended after H2O and then it came back for like 12 different remakes of H2O. So let's just let's just let's not call it ended until there's at least a five year period where there's no Michael Myers movie coming out. And no, I don't mean the Canadian icon. No, she literally dropped that motherfucker into a, a wood chipper. Does it mean or what was that? A, a car alert is yeah, whoop, com- compression. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's been out um, for a month. If you haven't seen it on Crave TV or whatever you get it down in the States, then you you, you should be watching some movies. Um, I, it was, okay, I enjoyed it. I know you did not like it. I thought it was camp. It was iconic. I I didn't like the fact that, that like, he wasn't in it that much. When when that little motherfucking dweeby motherfucker was down in the in the gutters, and was like, show me how you kill. And then the very next scene, it was him on the motorcycle and then someone wrapped their arms. I was like, I left the theater and I'm like, is that Michael Myers? Like, I fully was like, is that Michael Myers? Oh no, it's the girl. And then I left the theater and all of the homosexuals I was with went, did everybody think that Michael Myers was on the back of the boat? Yes, yes, we did, girl. And there's literally a photo of that someone photoshopped of Michael Myers on the back of the motorcycle with that dweeby motherfucker. Um, I enjoyed the movie. It was camp as fuck. It was unhinged. It was wild. It like it jumped the shark with the second movie, which was came out what a year, two years ago, when like forty motherfuckers all stabbed Michael Myers, and then he stood up and killed all of them in like ten and a half seconds, like mm-hmm. all forty people. Exactly. Like, he, he ain't dead yet, mister. He ain't dead. He, oh, no, he gone. He nope, gone. We nope, dumped his ass nope, in the nope, car nope, shredder nope, and nope, he's nope. dead. Nope. She dead. Nope. She dead. Nope. She dead. She nope. gone. We don't nope. have her no more. She gone. <sighs> Still on the realm of Halloween movies, the other Halloween movie that came out earlier, actually on September 30th, so almost a month ago, uh, over a month ago by the time this airs, is the prequel to the long awaited 1995 cult classic Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus 2 came out on September 30th this year. I think actually it's September 30th or October 1st, one or the other. I think September, September 30th. Or this, September 30th. Um, Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy Najimi and Bette Midler are, were back. They were back as the Sanderson sisters and incredible incredible it was it was it was incredible it was for me like the movie when those when they those three motherfuckers oh sorry spoiler alert when those three motherfuckers hopped the fuck up and were singing the witch's back and that little girl looked at her friend and went who are they performing for me bitch they're performing for me i don't fucking care about you in the movie that's who they're performing for this one right here and then when she said, you, I'm like, thank you. Thank you, girl. You are performing for me. Like, it was fun. Like, not every movie needs to be, like, show-stopping, brilliant, breathtaking, blah, 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 blah. I mean, when the first one came out, it was not considered a good movie. And it's not a good movie. It's just a fun movie. This one was fun. I went in going, the movie's going to have terrible writing, uh, really bad jokes, uh, weird special effects choices. And I don't care, because it's going to be campy, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be... A- for the girls, the gays, and the bays. Are and I said, okay? said you, You're pent up. No, I'm on a roll. I'm on a, ooh, I'm, she's, I'm really <laughs> feeling it. I don't know. I have not had coffee today either. I am on a roll today. 
Wow. I've, I've never seen you this hopped up before talking about entertainment. This is uh, I huge. feel very passionately about can, Hocus Pocus. I can tell. I can tell. Um, <laughs> Annie, uh, besides, because you've been working and doing a lot of theaters over the last month, I'm assuming you haven't had a chance to see a lot of uh, other movies probably that have come out over the last month. Um, I did watch that Good and Evil School of Good and Evil. Oh, yes, the School of You Good also and hated that one, and I liked that one. Oh, I despised it with a passion. I, I think it's my age. I have gotten to the point right now where I've started to hate everything that I watch. Uh, my husband joked, and I said I'd probably do it, but for Halloween, I'm going as the old white guy who's going to be yelling at their the kids to get off their lawn at the uh, – on Halloween, the trick or treater is like, "Get off my lawn!" So that's going to be me. <laughs> well, I had to that get is very you. <laughs> I don't like a lot of things. It's weird. It was cute. I will say it was like very Gen Z. And then I looked at the book, and it was like what, like one of those anime style covers. I'm like, oh, this is. I'm not the demographic for this. I fully accept it. I think it's a cool. It was a cute concept. I wish that. I, I, I wish they had they, made it they a little de- more sophisticated. They deviated from the book a lot. A I also lot. heard that. And they also are getting into some trouble for uh, anti-Semitism for the use of the blood magic because the way that they did it was very problematic. Um, so that's also a little bit of shit they're going to get for it. It was cute. I wish it was a little more sophisticated and from what the deviation from the book's that I was seeing it because I've not read the book. So I did a little bit of research and it seems like the books are a little more sophisticated than the version we got, but it was cute. I enjoyed it. I don't think it's life changing. Um, I, I can, I can say that when my, like, well, we watch bros, which you haven't seen the new Billy Eichner nope. movie. And I can tell you again, I did not like it. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on bros that I cannot say until I actually see the movie because I can't go in fully, like full guns are blazing, ready to blow the house down if I've not seen the movie. Okay, then um, I, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to our conversation after we stop recording this so I can get your unfiltered comments before we come back in November, uh, December to talk about that. Um, what are you looking forward to coming up in the movie realm? Anything in particular? Who? I feel like we're, we're about to enter Oscar time for movies. Um, I don't, I'm going to be real with you. Like movies have been pushed so far to the back of my radar because everything I'm seeing lately, like it's just either hard to convince my husband to want to see it or I have zero interest in it or I just don't have time. And it, when it comes down to it, it's like, do I want to go watch a movie? Do I want to watch a TV show? Or do I want to go engage with theater? And lately I'm having a lot more fun engaging with theater. So I'm trying to do that. Um, and on the TV shows are kind of killing it. Really? Uh, oh my God. House of Dragon, legendary. Um, don't, don't you do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ugh. Better? Did you not, did you, did you watch House of Dragon? 20 minutes of the first episode. I turned it off. Um, we were all rooting for incest and it was incredible. Um, we also <laughs> that's are the, that's the commercial that we use for this episode. Hey everyone, we're rooting for incest. No. It was incredible. Um, also, Homegirl banged the two hottest guys on the same episode. Show stopping. I mean, one was her uncle, so like, ooh, but like rooting woo. for incest. <laughs> we're rooting, we're rooting. Um, it was very fun. Also, anyone who's team green, I need to have a very strong conversation about why, because I'm confused. Uh, but when Allison showed up in the doorway in that green dress, like, that was a fucking moment. That was a breathtaking fucking, like, okay, sis, we get it. You're the enemy, but, like, you didn't have to slay us this hard. That was the only time I'm like, okay, I might be team green. And then I remembered her children are not well behaved. And she don't care. I have thoughts. Twenty so many minutes. thoughts. Twenty minutes into the episode, I went, "Nope." <laughs> nope. Um, also, Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings, incredible. It was incredible. I've only seen the backlash on uh, on social media of, "Oh, this person should be too this like they're not strong enough," or blah blah blah. I don't know. 
Oh my God, people need to calm the fuck down over that. I, I will say the only thing I'm not loving is they're clearly pigeonholing Gandalf into this. And that's not the vibe. What do you mean? At the end, you find out that the mysterious stranger is an Ishtar who wears gray. Uh, uh, He's not been named yet, but like, come on. Uh, so this is a prequel to the prequel, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is uh, Second Age. Okay. Leading up to the, this is from Sauron's appearance in Middle Earth to the fall of Sauron and the rise of Gondor. Still so it's, it's a vibe. It's, it's fun. It's really pretty. It's very good. The writing's fun. It looks visually stunning. The acting is really incredible. Like I said, the only thing I'm not loving is the fact that we're, we're very obviously pigeonholing Gandalf in. And the twist, I called it at the beginning and then it was, and then got like away from it. I was like, no, it can't be that. And then it caught me again. And I'm like, fuck, I was right. But then when I read interviews, they were like, it wasn't supposed to be a twist. You were supposed to immediately know that that was Sauron. But okay, it, it was good. It's fun. Incredible. Show stopping. Show stopping. Two shows that I will not watch. Good taps. Oh. And American Horror Story, very gay this season. Okay, you were the second person who has told me that and not the, the second person on the show who have told me that about American Horror Story this season. The first like three episodes have been like the gayest thing they've ever seen. Patty LaPone is literally a bathhouse singer. Oh, okay. Incredible, show-stopping. Russell Tovey, gorgeous. Not everything can be show-stopping, Michael. It is. Can you cannot ruin this for me? Also, oh, the okay. other one who plays Russell to- show the one who plays Russell Tovey's um love interest in the show, also incredible, gorgeous, will climb that mountain. Show stopping. <laughs> show stopping. Well, <laughs> we are on the hour mark, so Michael. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things and you got on a roll for all of them. So good for you. Like you were on I'm fire. Just, I'm wild. Uh, coming up this month uh, in November, we have the Weird Al Yankovic story. Uh, we have uh, Falling for Christmas, the Lindsay Lohan movie, Black Panther. Oh. Leave it alone. Show stopping. <laughs> <laughs> She's a mess. I love her. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever is coming out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. A Christmas Story Christmas. So the sequel to A Christmas Story is coming out because that's what we needed. Disenchanted is coming out. Uh, okay. That's about... Oh, Glass Onion, A Knife's Out Mystery. The sequel to A Knife's Out is coming out. So it is going to be a fun month for... Ent- for th- these are the ones that I saw that I was interested in um, there could be others that are going to be probably nominated for Oscars Oscar season is going to be coming up here in December which is going to be interesting to watch some of the movies that come out I'm looking forward to it yet again Michael and I will have a follow up bet to last year our, oh, annual, our annual Oscar recap in February for March and who will win probably him who's going to lose probably me who's going to get Guess me who's actually going to take the strategic out of out, just put it on a map try to figure out the algorithms and all that michael and at the end of the day what does it matter show stopping <laughs> that's what it matters. Um, i'm unhinged and i'm very deranged and that's just the vibe <laughs> i don't know why i'm crazy today I don't know either, but hopefully the viewers and listeners will enjoy it. If you like this episode, please send us a message, crossborderphotography at gmail.com. We always like to hear your feedback. If it's hate, please don't send it. If it's show stopping, send it away. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews Entertainment Rundown. Michael, thank you so much for stopping in and chatting twice in one week with me. Are you okay? Pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so with that, As always, go.
go pick up your copy of Just Keep Talking, Life, uh, Lockdown, Podcasting, and Health. The book is available on Amazon. You can click it in the show notes. Highly recommend it. It's a book by a great author. I don't know his name yet, but I would highly recommend it to anyone who's listening and watching this. That's Just Keep Talking, Lockdown, Podcasting, and Health. Uh, Michael, always a pleasure. So with that reminder, put down your social media feed, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, v- Venmo or Dimo or Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bro. Vimo, eh? Vivo. Oh, so put down your social media and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, helps our democracy. And yes, at the end of the day, it helps us be a better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown's Entertainment Rundown with our special entertainment pundit, Michael Nichols Pate. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. Life down, podcasting and health. Now available on Amazon.